Okay, so hi everybody. I'm Lizzie. I'm the Adult Services Manager at the North Riverside Public Library. And I'm here today to talk to you about how to season your wok, your, ca um, your carbon steel wok, or a cast iron skillet, because they can be seasoned in the same way. So I'm really excited to talk to you about this today. Um, you know, sorry, I'm just realizing the light behind me is a little funky. So, nope. Okay, that's dark, but it's better. Um, so during quarantine, one of the things that I sort of made a goal for myself to learn how to do, or to, um, yeah, I'd say to learn how to do, is to make a really good stir fry. I, my, I, I make stir fry a lot, but it never really turns out the way I want it to be. It usually ends up kind of soggy. And not that a wok is a magical cure-all, but woks are a really good option for stir fry because they are, number, you know, they're really made for it, um, and they're usually made of a really thin metal, so they get a lot hotter and they can sort of immediately um, crisp your vegetables without letting them get soggy. It'll cook really, really fast. So I wanted to get a wok, and I really wanted to get a carbon steel wok. Carbon steel woks are traditional. They are what have been used for, like, you know, thousands of years in China. Um, and you know, what really works about them is that they are, at, over time, the more and more and more you cook with them, you kind of are constantly re-seasoning them so they become non-stick. And that's a really, really great thing because you don't have like um, one of those non-stick coatings like Teflon where it can be carcinogenic or it can break down over time and you need to keep buying a new pan. With a carbon steel pan, you can re-season it. You know, if you take really good care of the seasoning, it'll last forever, but you can also re-season it as you need to be, so this is going to last you forever. So this, what I have right here, is a brand new uh, carbon steel skillet. So right now it's this kind of pretty silver color. There is a little bit of a discoloration in the center from where I heated it just earlier today. So you can tell how thin it is, that even a little bit of heating kind of left that discoloration. Um, and the reason I heated it was because it came to me, and when a new carbon steel skillet is shipped, they put a sort of um, oil coating on it at the factory so that it doesn't rust while it's shipping. Because before these are seasoned, they can rust almost immediately, really, really easily. And seasoning will take care of that as well as make it nonstick. Um, so when it comes, the first thing you need to do before you season it, before you do anything else, if you've got a, cast, a carbon steel skillet, um, wok is you need to scrub the heck out of it. Just get it like you want to get every little bit of the factory oil off so that it's ready and it's like raw to be seasoned. And then you want to almost immediately make sure it's completely dry so that it doesn't rust. And the way to do that is just to put it on the stove and let the stove, um, turn the heat on and let the stove dry it. And so um, that's kind of how this discoloration happened. That was the first time I've ever heated it and this already happened. So you know it starts out silver and as you season it it's going to become a really beautiful dark, um, really dark gray. And then, you know, as I continue to cook with it over time, the seasoning will get better and better and better. So I am going to be talking to you about this particular wok today, which I got. Um, but you can do the exact same thing that I'm doing right now with a cast iron skillet. So I do also want a cast iron skillet. The seasoning on this one's a little bit patchy because I haven't always maintained it very well. But you can see... Um, you can kind of see how patchy it is actually in this light, but it's still pretty non-stick. Um, and you know, I can always re-season it if I need to. If you are gonna do this along with me today or in the future, if you are, you've got an older like cast iron skillet or wok that you wanna re-season, the first thing you have to do is remove the old seasoning. So I would scrub this one down to take all the old seasoning off before re-seasoning it. But I'm not gonna do that today. I'm starting with the raw uh, carbon steel. Um, and then like a little bit about a wok. So again, like I don't, I didn't want to get an aluminum wok or a stainless steel wok or a ceramic wok because I wanted that really thin um, metal so that it can get really, really hot and you can get that big heat and get like the really crunchy vegetables. Um, and so what I did buy for my stove and for most American stoves is a flat bottomed wok. That's not traditional. Most woks, most traditional woks will be round bottomed, but they're really hard to keep steady on an American stove. You can do that if you buy a wok ring to go with it, and then you take, you know, you take this part off your stove and put the wok ring down. That'll hold it in place. But for me, it was a little easier to just buy a flat button, buy a bottomed one. So um, it's kind of up to you what you look for. There's also multiple ways to season a, a carbon steel wok, um, 
And I think that might be a little bit different than a cast iron skillet. Because when you look into how to season a cast iron skillet, you are basically going to put a really thin layer of oil on it and put it in the oven and bake it. And you can do that with a wok, which is actually what I am going to do today. But there are other schools of thought on how to season a wok. A lot of people suggest you just start cooking with it. Um, and then you wouldn't eat the first, the first time you cook with it to really season it. You wouldn't eat what you make but that it would like begin the seasoning process and you would just kind of go from there. So people will say like you put an onion and some ginger and some garlic in it and you spread all the oil around and you cook those and that that will begin the seasoning process. I'm not doing it that way today because that doesn't season the underside of it and I didn't really want it to rust. And because I don't want it to, you know, I don't want it to rust and so um, I'm going to just season it the way I would a cast iron skillet and why if you're doing cast iron skillet along with me. Um, and okay, so another uh, thing that you have to do is choose which oil that you're going to use to season either your carbon steel wok or your cast iron skillet. And the preferred oil um, on, oh hi Greg, I'm glad that this is helpful. Um, the preferred oil that most people recommend is flaxseed oil. So I don't know if you can see this. I got this off of eBay actually. What you really want is a 100% pure organic filtered flaxseed oil. You don't want it with any additives, uh, unfiltered I should say. You, you basically want it in as pure a state as you can get it because any like sort of something in there that is not actually flaxseed can sort of inhibit the seasoning from really working. So you actually would want to make sure that it's fairly expensive, like not crazy expensive, but this is a four ounce bottle and I paid seven dollars for it. That's actually kind of a lot per ounce um, and that's kind of what you need to do to get a really good one. And flaxseed oil is kind of acknowledged to be the best. Um, and I did look up why, and a lot of people say that it is really similar um, to linseed oil that you would use in like construction, and that it just creates a really hard, but this, this of course is food safe, and it creates a really hard surface, and it takes a, it doesn't really break down very easily. It also has an extremely high smoke point, and we are gonna be putting this in the oven at like 500 degrees, uh, which I've chosen an excellent day to do that. Um, and so, you know, you want something with a really low smoke point, uh, high smoke point, so that it doesn't get really smoky in your house as you're doing this. Uh, it still will probably get a little smoky, and I have heard people say that the flaxseed oil is going to smell a little like fish. So I'm not super jazzed. And right behind me, my door uh, to my patio is open so that I can kind of ameliorate some of that. Um, and that's kind of uh, what it is. So I'm going to start the process. I'm going to show you what I do. But the main thing is I won't be able to take you all the way through it because what we're going to do is after I coat my pan in oil, I'm going to put it in the oven for an hour and then I'm going to kind of let it season and then I'm going to repeat this process a few times. So I won't be able to stay with you for all of that time, of course, but I will send pictures when it's finished so you can kind of see, you can compare the current wok to the finished product. So to get started, you basically just want to take a fairly small amount of oil. Actually, I'm gonna just move the camera. So it might cut off the top of my head a little, but I want you to see the walk. So hopefully, and I'll step back. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. And actually, you know, I'm gonna take a before picture really quickly. I forgot to do that. So that I, I'll be able to show in the comments kind of what the change in look is like between seasonings. So you don't wanna use a lot of oil. The main problem, the, the place people go wrong when they're seasoning a cast iron skillet or a wok is they use way too much oil. And they think that that's good because like, you know, you want the oil to work, but it ends up just being sticky and it doesn't really actually make a non-stick surface, which is the entire point of doing this. So I'm gonna pour like a teaspoon of oil in and then I'm gonna take a paper towel and just rub it all over the surface and all over the hand. So I have actually, you can kind of see I've removed the handle because this is a wood handle that's not going to go in the oven very safely. Um, but I'm going to, you know, if any part of this that's metal is going to get the oil rubbed on it. So, doo -doo -doo. and just, you know, fairly quickly, you don't, you really don't want to miss any spots, obviously. And if you find that you haven't used enough oil, you can always use a little bit more. And you can also use your hands. Like if the if you don't feel like you're getting everywhere with the paper towel, just get your hand in there and just get it, like you'll be able to feel it rubbing in. So it's gonna be a little sticky, which isn't the ideal situation, but 
it will pay off in the end. So I am going to use, I don't think that was quite enough, I'm going to use a little bit more so that I can do the other side. And I'm just going to sort of turn it over on my stove. This is going to get a little messy, so I'm going to definitely do some cleaning after we're done um, so that whatever drips get on my stove or cleaned off. But for now, I'm not going to worry too much about the mess and just really get it all, every little section. You don't want to miss anywhere. And I don't know how visibly this shows up on camera, but you, you can kind of see how the shine is on it. You can really see that it is getting an oil coating. My hands are so sticky right now. Um, and you know, you just want to go all over it and make sure that there's no spots that you can feel that don't have a coating of oil on it. And I think I've done a pretty good job. I'm going to get to handle just completely. Okay, so now here's the real key. I've done that. This, this cast iron skillet is not, I would not say that this is over oiled. It's not crazy oily. You can't see drips of oil coming from anywhere. But it's still got too much oil on it to have a really successful seasoning. You want the thinnest layer. Like you barely want to be able to tell there's even oil on there. The tiniest, thinnest layer because you really need like that to soak into the metal and bond to it. And if there's too much, you can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another paper towel and I'm going to wipe off a lot of the oil I just put. So where did I put my paper towels? Oh, they're right behind the, they're behind you guys. Okay. So I'm going to go back in, make a little bit of noise. And again, you don't have to do this with a wok. You can do this also with a cast iron skillet and it's the exact same process. You just need to make sure it's the thinnest, measliest, barely thereest layer that you can possibly get. So I'm going to take probably, I'm going to use a few paper towels to really wipe it off to make sure I'm absolutely getting it. So let's see. Yeah, it's like I can still feel, it still feels very oily and you want it to barely even feel oily to you. And like, look how much I used, like barely any of this bottle. And so you can see you really, this is not going to require a lot. And that's why you do multiple seasonings. So I'm probably going to do this exact same process three or four times to really get a super nonstick surface to be able to work with. And then after that, you don't have to maintain it very much. You maintain it by cooking with oil in it. And that's it. All right, so I think this is probably, you can see it's still shiny, but it's less shiny than it was before. So I've gotten a lot of it off. Okay. And... Just one more go through, and that's and that's probably pretty good. It's everywhere on here, and it is not very thick, but it's definitely there. I haven't been able to rub it all off because it's oil. You can't really rub all of it. You have to actually use soap to get it all off. So, so now comes the fun part. I'm going to put it in my oven with the oven cold. The oven is not on. Um, and actually, you know what? Before I do that. I'm going to try and get some in this handle here, because if I season in the handle, it won't actually um, rust in there. Oh, Greg, I'm using flaxseed oil. So I don't know if you can read this. This is organic flaxseed oil, cold pressed, no additives. It's 100% pure. Um, it has to be refrigerated. That's how you know you have a good one. It has a really high smoke point, so you can heat it at very high temperatures, and it creates a really hard surface. So flaxseed oil is better than, for example, olive oil, because olive oil has a really low smoke point. Um, and because of the really hard surface created by flaxseed oil, because it's so similar to something like linseed oil, um, that's a really good one to use for, for this particular purpose, um, especially if you do multiple coats. So I'm just going to actually like stick my finger right in there and just, I'm going to get it on the inside of the handle, because, you know, because carbon steel rusts so easily, if you don't season all of it, then the parts that you don't season could rust. And I really don't want to deal with that because rust spreads. And then you have to kind of keep going and, um, you know, re-seasoning it. And like you should ideally only have to do this one time. Or you have to do multiple seasonings, but the multiple seasonings only ever one time. Okay, so let me kind of wipe off the handle again since I got some extra oil on there. All right, so I'm gonna put it in the oven cold. And I am going to then allow the oven to preheat with the wok in it 
to 500 degrees. It's very hot. Very, very hot. And I'm going to put it in upside down. So I'm going to put it in like this. Um, I'm not actually sure why. It's just every single person who seasons what's what I've always done with my cast iron skillets. And it's just what people recommend. I'm sure there's a reason for it. But I don't want to give you the wrong reason. So I'm just going to say that I'm not sure why. So I'm going to put it in upside down. And I'm going to turn my oven to 500 degrees. This is another reason I have the door open behind me. I am going to be paying very close attention to if it starts smoking. It shouldn't, but five, you know, because it has such a high smoke point. But 500 degrees is very, very hot. So if it does start smoking, I need to be here to like turn off the fire alarm and uh, like make sure the door has got a good breeze and everything. Um, and so it's going to preheat with the oven to 500 degrees. And then when it hits 500 degrees, I'm going to set my timer for an hour. And I'm going to let it bake at 500 for a full hour. And then I'm going to turn it off. But I am not going to take it out. I'm going to leave the oven door closed for a further two hours so that it can completely cool while still in the oven. And then I'm going to take it back out and I'm going to repeat this exact same process. The very, you know, using a very thin layer of oil, scraping off even more of the oil, baking it at 500 degrees for another hour. And I'm going to do this three or four times to get that really, 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 really good seasoning. That basically means no piece of vegetable or meat or anything will ever stick to it. And then I'm going to basically have a natural chemical free, well, I guess oil is a chemical, but like um, man-made chemical free, uh, I guess technically oil is man-made too, but you guys get what I'm saying. I'm going to have a natural non-stick skillet that will stay non-stick stick for maybe 50 years and I won't ever have to worry about it being carcinogenic or anything like that. So I'm very excited to then create a stir fry. I might do another Talented Tuesday in the future, like how to actually do a good stir fry. But first I have to make sure I know how, because like I said at the beginning of this, my stir fries are always, always soggy, which is the whole reason I bought a wok. So hopefully it will work. If you guys have any more questions about anything I just did, please do make a comment. I'll answer it if I know it, or I'll look up the answer if I don't. And otherwise, I will I'll do a picture of the wok before and after the first seasoning, the second seasoning, and the third seasoning in the comments um, of this video so that you can kind of see how the process goes. And you know what, it's too, my hands are too sticky to put that back in the fridge, so I'm gonna wait till I wash them. Um, and in the absence of any questions, oh wait, let me see. Oh Greg, I, I see you gave me a thumbs up, so that's perfect. So since I don't see any questions, I'll go ahead and end the video here, but if you do have questions, I will be paying attention to the comments on this video, so just leave a comment and I will type my answer. And thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you guys. So the library has started um, accepting returns. And as of Tuesday, uh, the 16th, next Tuesday, we were, are going to start offering curbside pickup. Really looking forward to being able to do that. And so if you are looking for any books, movies, um, CDs, audiobooks, any physical items that the library lends, get in touch. So I'm really looking forward to that. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks. Bye.